all right y'all so the third episode for pokemon horizons just aired and with a forewarning it's not the most interesting episode but i think it's still a pretty nice episode and i had a lot of thoughts watching it so let me summarize what happens the episode starts with actually showing us Liko's grandma so this is obviously something of concern to us the grandma gives her the pendant the pendant has terapagus or baby terapagus inside it no it is the terapagus so who is this grandma i know we had joking theories that it's sada of course that's not how things work but whoever this grandma is she would have to have some history either linking the people who've done an expedition in the past and got that pendant or she has a distant relation to the people now hunting it so yeah it's a flashback of her grandma and she's talking about the pendant and if you look to the side the grandma first off she does not look like any grandma she looks like she has some experience that she knows some things and uh beside her she has a freaking arcanine so she's she's a full trainer it almost looks like let's say there's an ancient expedition team the equivalent of heats but in this story that they found all this information but they were evil people and the grandma's a member of that who then just went astray and kept one of the pendants and is kind of hiding from them and so the uh, the rest of the people's descendants would probably be the current evil team hunting Liko's pendant. That's the kind of idea I get. She says something about the pendant. I can't really tell. We'll wait a few days for the subs to come out. But yeah, it's a dream. So Liko wakes up and she's like, where the frick am I? And of course, after Sprigutitu got taken away, they put her in one of the cabins, the airship people. So I guess this is a proper time to introduce the people on the airship, the rising volt attackers. The one who put her in the cabin is this coal girl. I called her the coal girl, but she's like the full maintenance girl who looks over the whole ship. She's putting coals to keep the furnace running. She got slugmas helping her. Then she got like wires hooked up to an electric and she's maintaining the electricity. Then she's like sweeping the ship. So there's her. Her name is Orla. I think Freed and Orla are the only two actual trainers on the ship. And she's extremely strong because she has a Metagross. She might even be stronger than Freed. I don't even know. But let's just say she's like kind of second place. Then there's this buff guy who's the chef of the crew and he's kind of a rock trainer not really he just has a, a rock rough as a partner this guy's name is murdoch as you can tell his hair is literally cutlery too then the third member we have is molly who seems to be the healing girl of the ship she looks like an off-brand or a luxury brand nurse joy she got a chancy sweater and a partner chancy and then the last member is ludlow this freaking grandpa who i don't even know well, anything he does, he just fishes all day. He doesn't even face the crew. He just sits there at the top and fishes. I think he has a muck, actually. So when these four or five people group up together, they always do this freaking handshake, right? Except the fisherman is never there. He's on the freaking top of the ship just fishing. But whenever they're doing the handshake, he's just doing it himself, despite not even looking at them. The sucker freaks me out. <laughs> chill so yeah it's a little one piece thing going on also their airship has a name too it's called the brave asagi so we don't know what the rising volt tacklers are how they came together what their backstory is but they seem to be good willed but yeah, now she's on the freaking ship so she comes out of the cabin and she gets a kind of taste of what the airship life is you got the guy cooking food chancy girl comes down like that smells good let me eat some the girl is sweeping the ship and meanwhile freed is actually ever since sprigatito was taken away he's been flying around on charizard trying to find out where the evil team hideout is but obviously they have no leads they're hidden pretty well meanwhile the evil dudes if you remember are called the explorers and it's really just these three members we're just gonna keep it focused on them for now but they have this whole warehouse and that's where they have sprigatito and I just take a second to say that this is when the opening of the episode plays and I realized that the needle thing whatever that crap is it has Quaxley so is it like the honorary third member do we got Liko Roy and needle thing are we gonna look like 10 episodes from now when it's like a part of the crew because I also notice if you like see parts of the earlier episodes that Quaxley is on the airship so like, could you imagine if it was one of the people on the ship that are inside the needle thing? But no one on the crew is short except the old man. He's my prime suspect. There's no way this is his voice. 
his alternate characters to go in a suit and give training advice. Okay, so free to searching around. So the healer girl gives Liko some menial tasks to do. She's like, go to the Pokemon Center. We'll dock on Kanto. Go pick me up some stuff. So Liko obviously goes, puts in the order, and she's waiting on the side. And another girl barges in with an injured Pokemon all concerned for it. So it reminds Liko of how bad a trainer she is. That her Pokemon is not only injured but missing. And how horribly it's probably being treated by the evil people. And it cuts to Sprigatito having the time of its life in the warehouse with this freaking girl from the Explorers. This girl's overfeeding it cat food, snuggling the crap out of it, tre treating it like her baby. So I guess I can explain the evil team here. You have the main guy and then his two allies, his sidekicks. The main guy's name is Amethyo. And then the girl's name is Konya and the other guy is Zer. Konya is totally pampering this Sprigatito, and Sprigatito was shown to become extremely comfortable with her. Which sucks, because you know that Sprigatito doesn't get along with Liko, and here it is getting along with this girl properly. Even if Liko came and saved it, it probably wouldn't even want to go back to her. But I had a thought at this point, seeing how kind the lady was, which is that the main guy, Amatio, saved Sprigatito. It was supposed to fall off the ship. If he was really evil, couldn't he have just escaped and ignored it? So it gave me the thought that maybe these evil guys aren't as bad as we thought or bad at all. And that maybe the real evil would have to go higher up. Anyhow, cut to a bit. And what is Konya doing but buying more cat food for Sprigatito? I don't even think they asked her to leave the warehouse. But she's left the warehouse and she has her freaking head covering her eyes. And she's trying to stock up on more food to fatten this cat. And of course, the freaking rising volt attackers are docked in the city right now. Rockruff, the chef's Pokemon, literally smells her instantly and starts chasing her. Meanwhile, it shows Zir, the other evil guy, stalking the ship from nearby, like he's scheming something. While they're chasing her, she calls Amethyo like, bro, I effed up, they found me. They're about to chase me back to the hideout. And meanwhile, Zer sneaks a tracker on the airship and quickly escapes. I mean, I thought it was a bomb at first. I think it's a tracker. Anyhow, Liko and Freed find the warehouse and she wants to sneak in herself, but Freed tells her to chill and gives her a plan. And the whole interaction here, you can see, it's kind of like he's babysitting her. He gives her some plan and they walk into the warehouse in plain sight where Amethyo is just on the other side. Here, they're going to make a, a business drug deal. So Amethyo says, okay, give me the pendant. I'll give you the Sprigatito. And Liko offers it. But Freed intervenes here and he's like, listen, let's battle again. And if you beat me, I'll give you the pendant. No questions asked. In fact, I, I don't know what they're saying, but he might have even said, keep the Sprigatito. All or nothing deal. So Amethyo's like, bro, you know what? Fine. And so they have Liko stand to the side while the two of them fight. And so he sends out Captain Pikachu fighting against the Serilege. And this Serilege is stacked. It's mad fast and actually bodying the Pikachu pretty well. Meanwhile, it cuts to Liko and she's not standing to the side at all. She's roaming the warehouse searching for Sprigatito. I don't know how freaking Amethyo let this happen. This is another point that makes me think these guys, maybe they aren't actually as evil as we think. Or maybe... It's a red herring that they're evil. Maybe we should have given them the pendant. Because we see a couple qualities here that don't look so evil. Amatheo is honoring the battle request. When really he could have just stayed persistent and said, Nah, just give me the pendant. But yeah, she eventually finds a locked door with Sprigatito inside it. So she's trying to open it. Sprigatito's like, frick, I gotta... This was heaven here. But yeah, she eventually gets the door open, steals Sprigatito and run off. So mission success. And then the girl pops up. She clearly sees Liko stole the Sprigatito and she's like in her cute pet voice asking Sprigatito to come and eat more food. This is a problem, of course, because that's the good girl. Liko sucks to Sprigatito, but Sprigatito actually stays by Liko's side instead of going to the kind lady that overfed it. It's actually a pretty pivotal moment because you never really properly see Sprigatito showing like love for Liko. It showed it pretty quickly to the <laughs> evil girl. But it's almost like Sprigatito has become properly accustomed to Liko and only shows it subtly. But it does like her. Freaking evil Konya gets mad so she sends out a whole Skarmory. And Liko gonna actually try to fight it. I mean, that's her only way out. And so she uses Sprigatito but guess what it shows? She's fully able to use Leaf Edge. And the same gigantic one. It's not just me that's tripping. Even Konya herself says, what the hell? Why is your leafage this strong? And she looks up and Liko's run away. So this is a cool theme. Liko showing not beating enemies head on, but outsmarting them and escaping. There's definitely some potential here for her. I don't think the other trainers at school 
are as like battle smart as what she's showing but yeah she runs off with their starter freed abandons his battle and escapes as well and they actually make it back on the airship and fly back in the sky so she got her starter back that's the gist of the episode obviously now that Spigatito's back Liko can part ways with the rising bolt attackers and just go back to school but at the end while she's staring at the sunset and thinking about sleeping in the airship dorm and the life these guys are living up here she goes up to them and asks if she could become a member and they let her join so she's a member now so now we have five members under freed and Liko's one of them. Yo, have the fisherman do it again. Fisherman? Chill, chill. <laughs> How does he know? He's on the other side of the ship. That's the end of the episode. And remember, the way this series goes, it's arcs. So the episodes are not going to start getting stretched out like Ash Adventures again and again. Essentially, anytime you get these slice of life episodes, things are still going to be happening. So now we have two questions of concern what are the motivations of the evil guys and what is like the backstory and motivation of freed and his crew i'm not saying we might have them backwards like freed is evil and the explorers are the good guys but i'm just there's obviously stuff we have to learn and then there's the tease for the next episode it shows roy he's coming out of his house to play He's not as ugly as I thought, but it looks like he wants to be a trainer. It doesn't look like he has any Pokemon right now, but he like goes to the beach and picks up rocks and throws them at the sea, pretending to catch Pokemon. On the beach, he sees a scarf, and it's obviously the Rising Voltacular symbol. So it looks like, I don't know how, but I think he's going to find a way to join them as well. The preview itself for next episode shows Liko meeting up with Roy and Roy having a Fue Coco. So I don't know if he's, if like the Fue Coco on the ship wandered and Roy is chilling with it and that somehow ends up becoming his Pokemon but it does show Roy showing Liko the ball in the preview so next episode we're gonna find out just what it is and you never know this could have some equivalent with the actual Scarlet and Violet story and of course we have to think about the tracker that they put on the ship so the evil guys are gonna keep watch on them wherever they go in the credits of this episode they also did a polka rap not that you know I'm gonna show you any clips of it but She's freaking rapping? She's so gassy she joined, she's rapping. Chill. Alright, that's enough, bro. Re now Roy's rapping. The poker rap, if you look, shows some Paradox Pokemon on it. We're gonna eventually reach the time machine stuff and bring out the Paradox Pokemon. And the anime team probably has information even we don't know. So it's gonna be cool to watch these episodes and see a different approach to the whole time machine thing and use it to nuke some of our theories like the dream theory or support the dream theory who knows also the details throughout this anime are so funny like even in this episode if you just look around at the unimportant characters in the back they're doing something stupid like here's captain pikachu warming up to charizard's tail they didn't take down my last video so i guess i'll do this again next week take care